All right, today I'm answering just kind of like a hodgepodge of questions here. So um, the first one was, how do I even know if I like something? Like it's been so long, I don't even think I like it. Um, and there are a lot of lies I told myself uh, throughout my eating disorder that I didn't like this, I didn't like that, and oh, I don't like that. That's disgusting. Oh, that makes me feel sick. That makes my stomach hurt. And when you live with an eating disorder, regardless of how long, you start to kind of tell yourselves or, or feed yourself these lies about foods that you think you don't eat. Um, so throughout recovery, I had to write down not only like a fear food list of like things I knew I really, really, really wanted to be able to eat because I knew I loved, but I had to write down a list of things that I need to revisit, things that I thought I really just don't love. And surprisingly, a lot of those things on that list that I had told myself over the years I really don't like, I actually liked a lot. One of those things on that list was cheesecake. I told myself I hated cheesecake. I thought it was disgusting. Well, you've heard me talk on this channel how much I love cheesecake. Cheese cheesecake's really, really good. I love it. But I thought it was, literally, I believed that I thought it was disgusting. It made me feel sick. Um, so I want you to write out a list of foods that you think you've told yourself you don't like. Pizza is another one of those things for me that I was like, I just really don't like pizza. I don't. I really, really, really like pizza. Um, now that I've rediscovered pizza and I eat it all the time and it's really good to me, I like it. Um, however, there were some things that I tried out and I was like, yeah, actually, I think I still don't really like this food. And that's fair, but at least you have to give yourself a chance. You have to give yourself a few times of eating it. And I say a few times because it could be that the first time that you eat it, um, you feel so anxious that you can't even taste it. And then you tell yourself, yeah, I don't even really like this. It doesn't even taste that good. Or you're so anxious that your stomach is just in knots and you feel horribly sick from eating it. It's probably not the food, it's probably that anxiety. And possibly perhaps it is the food, but it's that your body doesn't even have the enzymes right now to be able to digest them. So give it a chance. Um, going into the other question that I was asked is, okay, so we're supposed to try all these foods and eat all this stuff, but every time I branch out and eat something different, I get this tremendous pain, like just horrible, horrible stomach pain that's debilitating. And um, I can relate to that with a lot of foods that I started introducing. I, I seriously thought, like I had to lay down in a ball. I felt so, so sick. And I don't know still if it was because my food, or because my stomach couldn't digest that food just because it wasn't used to it, or if it was the anxiety, or perhaps both which would cause a lot of pain. Um, so some recommendations for that one, like if you're not taking a digestive enzyme, and I don't usually like recommend supplements, but that was something, I got a good digestive enzyme and that really helped, especially when I started eating red meat. I had really bad bloating and cramping and that seemed to really help. Um, another thing is if it's really, really debilitating, um, and this is the only time I'd ever say to enter something in slowly, but it would be those things that you know are making you horribly ill. Instead of just eliminating and saying, I'm not eating those anymore, start slowly. Okay, I'm gonna have a little bit of that today. I'm gonna have a little bit more tomorrow. I'm gonna have a little bit, and kind of ease your body back into um, knowing how to digest that, knowing that it's gonna get it and it starts producing the enzymes again so that you can't digest it. So yeah, don't just eliminate it because you did it once and it didn't taste that good and made your stomach hurt because that's gonna keep you stuck and then you're not gonna be able to find full freedom with food. So um, another question that I got asked, and this is a good one because a lot of people experience this is, okay, so I liked baking and cooking and watching cooking shows before my eating disorder um, and I'm still like I'm in my recovery but I still find myself spending a lot of time watching these shows and looking up recipes. And I just don't know if it's like truly a passion of mine or if it's my eating disorder and me just being really mentally hungry. Um, and my advice to that person, she may not have liked it, but my advice to that person was, that's fine. But in the meantime, while you're in recovery, those things that you're watching on a cooking show and the things, the recipes you're looking up, if you're gonna do that, commit to eating whatever that is that you're watching go get whatever it is you're watching. They're making some like elaborate, delicious, um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't even know. Some really good, good meal and it looks really good to you. Then go find a way to buy it or to get the ingredients and make it. Or if you're looking up a recipe, you're like, oh, that looks so good. That looks so good. That looks so good. Okay. Mark those and commit to making them as it's lit. like make the actual ingredients that asked for. Don't try to supplement with other, um, like diet or low calorie options and make it and eat it. 
So yeah, you can still have that passion, but I'm willing to bet that most likely if you're in recovery from eating disorder and you find yourself watching a lot of food shows and a lot of recipes and looking up a lot of recipes, it's likely that you're mentally hungry and you're looking for ways to, um, to satisfy that without eating. And that's not just not going to work. So, um, and it may be that when you're fully recovered, you're sitting around on a Friday night and you still really love watching cooking shows, that's fine, but it's gonna be very different. So while you're in recovery, I challenge you if you're doing that, um, perhaps take it out, stop stop doing it, or if you really truly think that you love it, that's fine, go ahead and eat whatever it is that you're watching or looking at. Um, and then the other question, I know this is kind of like all over the place, but I just wanted to answer these questions in one video. Um, the other question was, um, I, I messed up today. I'll give you an example. Um, I had a job interview and it went really bad. Like I just stuttered over my words. I didn't seem confident. I didn't have good answers to their questions. I kind of felt like a failure. And then I came home and it was time for lunch and I just felt like I couldn't eat. Like I didn't deserve to eat. And it's really interesting because restriction does a few things. Um, one, it will make us feel numb. Two, when we restrict, somehow we feel like we're balancing out like the wrongs that we've done in our life or the things that we feel like we're not good enough. If we restrict, then it kind of will balance that back out. And um, neither of those things are really logical if you think about it because it's not changing anything. It's just you restricting and not eating and not taking care of your health. And so um, you have to remember like you don't have to earn your food. You do not have to earn your food in the form of like performing well in an interview, in the form of exercising, in the form of being productive, in the form of being a perfect parent. Like none of those things are correlated or relate to the fact that you're a human being and you need food. And so in, in recovery, if you can practice that tool of like, that coping skill of like, okay, I don't feel great about myself today. And that's a, that's a common feeling when you're when you're stuck in an eating disorder. You oftentimes have like, some lower self-esteem. You're not always feeling like you're making good choices, or you don't feel like um, you're performing well, or you don't feel like you're you know like um, living up to your friend or your spouse or whatever it is. You're always kind of like comparing, and so those feelings are going to keep you stuck. So being able to separate those feelings and the fact that you're hungry and you want to eat are going to be imperative, like so important. And that is such a powerful thing to be able to master. And um, it will get you to recovery because I have days where I mess up and I scream at my kids and I'm really honored with my husband if I'm like about to start my period. And um, I don't always, you know, I don't always feel great about myself and think I'm, I'm doing the best in the world, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm hungry and I need to eat when I'm hungry, I eat. And so being able to um, just practice that over and over and over again. So when those um, experiences come up, use that as, oh, what a great opportunity for me to still eat even though I feel this way, even though I don't feel great about myself today, or even though I messed up on this. So anyways, those are some of the um, questions. Let me see, I think I got all of them. Oh, and then just also, I really do love the questions because of course I want to answer like, the questions that you guys have because I feel like that will help you the most and that's why I'm on here doing this channel. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can either email me or you can put them in the comments. Um, and I don't, if you notice, I, I don't really read them word for word. They're just kind of general, like these are issues people are having, these are struggles that people are wondering about. And so um, that's just kind of how I prefer to do it. And then also um, go check out, if you're interested in finding a coach and you want to know more about me, um, go check out my coaching website. It's ybefree.com. So the be free I came up with because one, we all want to be free, but my name is Becky Freestone. So B-E and then my last name free stone. So does that make sense? Be free. Anyways, hopefully that makes sense. When I thought of it, I was like, that's perfect. So, um, some people ask, like, why did you choose that? But that's why. So anyways, have a great day. Thanks.